Uh, my name is Dave Whaley. I'm, uh, I, I work for ARM. And today I want to talk a little bit about uh, moving the Android ecosystem to 64-bit. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I've been at ARM for just under two years. Uh, prior to that, uh, I worked at Intel for a while, uh, but also worked at Motorola Mobility. Um, been around the Android ecosystem for a long time. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's sort of near and dear to my heart, so it's sort of a, a, a fun topic for me to talk about. So um, with that, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, um, these topics today. Um, I'm not going to go through the agenda, but this is sort of the stuff that we're going to be, that we're gonna be touching on. And um, <clears throat> I think probably, um, I'm not sure how much you guys know about ARM, but, uh, but ARM is, uh, has been around for about 26 years. Um, we've shipped about 125 billion chips with ARM technology in it. Um, we account for about 95% or, or more of, uh, of smartphones uh, in, in, the, in the market today. Um, the interesting thing is we've actually shipped um, 20 billion chips just in the past, in the past year alone. So the, the sort of the ramp up um, uh, of, of volume that we're shipping is, is, is pretty significant. 70% um, of, uh, of the global population is reached by, by ARM. So it's, it's a technology company that's sort of behind the curtain, um, but we, we've, uh, we've, we've done a lot of interesting things. We do a lot of partnerships. Um, Android is very near and dear to our hearts. So, uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, sort of how we got here. Um, ARM introduced the 64-bit instruction set architecture back in 2011 uh, with ARM 8. Um, it, it added some advanced SIMD support uh, and scalar floating point. Um, and that's sort of the very first place where 64-bit where mobile was, was available. Shortly afterwards, um, in 2014, Google released Lollipop. That is the very first uh, version of, of Android that was 64-bit compliant. They also replaced uh, Dalvik with the Android runtime. Uh, we've been working very closely with the art team ever since, uh, optimizing uh, the runtime for, for ARM, and uh, we've uh, you know, sort of had a lot of time to, to, to make some very good and very um, performant uh, changes to our code, so it's, it's been a good thing. And then Android Pie, which was just released uh, back in August. Um, this is really the very first, uh, and this still supports both 32 and 64-bit, but there was a change uh, to Android Pie to the compatibility definition document that for the first time allows a 64-bit only version uh, of a device uh, that, that's, that's Android. So that's, uh, <clears throat> that's fairly significant um, because there was an announcement uh, that Google made back in December of last year that starting in August of 2019, Google Play will be requiring that applications that are new or updated coming into the Play Store to the Play Console be 64-bit capable. 32-bit's not going away, but 64-bit is going to be required. If you read the, um, the Google blog post that announces this, it's from uh, I think it's mid-December of last year. Um, they talk about a 64-bit only future uh, for for Android, and that's and that's something that that, that ARM is is very supportive of. Uh, we think it's a it's a good thing for the Android ecosystem, and I'll I'll tell you why here in a, in a little bit. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, we moved from a 32-bit architecture, which is ARM 7, and, and I'm apologize if I'm sort of hardware geeking out a little bit on hardware here, but, uh, but basically we, we moved to, to, to ARM V8 in 2011, where we started adding a 64-bit side uh, to the architecture. In 2018, we added even more. Um, <clears throat> some of the things that we're most concerned about, besides performance, and performance to us means not just speed, but also battery life. We're also very concerned about app security. Um, so we're adding um, some instructions around memory tagging, pointer authentication, 
um, branch target identifier. Which these are all things that that sort of keep keep applications in their in their own lane um, and and do the right thing. Um, if you notice, a lot of these or all of these uh, this functionality is is 64 bit uh, and not available in 32 bit. Um, the reality is is that we're 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 actually running out of instruction space in the 32 bit architecture. So going forward. Um, we need to start doing more and more on 64-bit and doing more optimizations there. So that's that's what's uh, that's what sort of our current trajectory right now. So as a Android developer, why should you care? Um, I think that uh, you know in general, 64-bit apps will tend to load faster, um, fetch larger part, you know, larger chunks of data, power down faster. Um, they're actually more performance, potentially more battery life as well. Um, app security I mentioned, um, compute intensive workloads, things that are coming like machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, those sorts of things. Um, even some of the, uh, you know, some of the immersive games where we're looking at, uh, you know, as, as many frames per second as we can possibly generate, those are things that 64-bit uh, more easily supports than 32-bit. Um, for Java apps, uh, I mentioned earlier that we've been continuing to to, to work with uh, the Android runtime. Um, if you have a Java app that has has no 32-bit libraries in it, like potentially you might have a, maybe an analytics library or something that's included. If it's 32-bit, um, it will the app will run or Java Art will run it as a 32-bit app. So you want to make sure with if if you have Java apps. Um, with embedded libraries, make sure that they're also 64-bit, and then you get full performance out of uh, out of your application. Um, we really think that this does sort of future-proof your app um, because Google is going to be requiring 64-bit support. Um, this is a, a sort of do it now. You're going to be well set up for in, in the future. You're not going to be able to, or not going to need to re recompile it uh, in, in the future. It's very likely that uh, that you'll see more and more 64-bit only instructions coming from 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 ARM, and that's and it's it's just uh, you know sort of what's going to be happening most likely. So, so I think it's a good thing. Um, this is maybe my own personal opinion, <laughs> um, but 64-bit uh, Android is a little bit cleaner, um, and this really um, relates mostly to having a single ABI. That you're supporting, where you're not duplicating ABIs and and the resources that 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 are required to support those, um, you know, those binary interfaces. So that's uh, those are all sort of benefits for why you should be you know interested in moving to 64-bit. So um, this past spring at Google I/O. Uh, Google touched on a couple of well, three, three, three sort of pillars that they're that they're most interested in: um, security, performance, and good interactions with apps. Um, security and performance are two things that that uh, that ARM is also latched onto as very important moving forward with Android. Um, this is just an illustration of sort of how creative uh, some. Uh, of our developer friends can be. Uh, this is an illustration of, of sort of what's happening in the in the game industry with with pirate with piracy, where they're taking an taking an app, adding their own ad server, and then redistributing the you know the app on a on a separate marketplace and basically really stealing ad revenue from you. So um, my point here really is that that the that the hardware features that ARM is including in its in its Current architectures really support stopping these sort of side attacks uh, and preventing these sorts of things. So, things like um, you know memory tagging and pointer authentication. Basically, those things detect whether a pointer is pointing where we expect it to point. Um, and you know memory tagging really creates a union between uh, the the call and the referenced in the, in the referenced memory, so that it, so that there there can't be sort of a side attack. Um, and, and those are those are all sort of you know come as part of, of the of the V8 architecture, which is again 64-bit. So um, hopefully those are 
those are things that that you care about as well. I, th I, th I think that's a that's a pretty uh, pretty common theme these days. So in terms of performance, um, what we've been seeing sort of through um, through the years here is performance is just increasing all the time. Um, we see about a two and a half um, times increase since 2016 uh, to, to 2020. That's what we're forecasting. Um, so we really think that you know year over year this is this is a you know a very good trend. And this is really performance that's not. Uh, this is actually also relating to battery performance. I mean, this is not. Uh, we're not. We're not. Um, you know, hurting battery battery performance by getting this this sort of you know this sort of um, you know, CPU performance as well. So, so these are things that uh, again that we're that are very near and dear to our heart. So, um, really, the sort of the, the mobile world is changing. Um, again, this is this is what uh, sort of what I believe is 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 really you know what needs to happen. But um, you know, you get. Additional performance gains through through using the 64-bit architecture, um, power efficiency gains. You know you don't want your app to be the one that drains the battery. Um, so those are those are things that are that, that we're very conscious of. Um, and then really in the next in the next four years, we believe that you know we're going to see three times greater than three times and greater than four times performance for integer and floating point math. Um, uh, Machine learning workloads that we're currently forecasting, we're seeing like we're forecasting about a 20 percent or 20 times, uh, sorry, 20 times uh, increase in in those in the performance that we're currently seeing. So security, um, again, these are things that uh, that that we're that we're focusing on the microarchitecture and architectural features. We're trying to keep side attacks at an absolute minimum. Um, Again, these are the things I, I, that I've mentioned, but you know, the pointer authentication uh, sort of thwarts a lot of the return-oriented programming attacks, where branch uh, the branch target identifier um, supports the jump-oriented um, uh, programming attacks, or, or or thwarts those as well. Um, you know, what we really say is if there's if there's hardware defense, um, then then the apps are definitely much, much more secure. Um, sort of moving on here and talking a little bit more about some of the some of the use cases that we're seeing around uh, mobile and we really believe require 64-bit uh, support. You know, immersive gaming, um, a lot of the machine learning. Um, I think there's still debate on on how much of that happens on the client device and how much happens sort of at the edge or on the cloud. But there's still going to be a, you know a lot of compute required. Uh, for machine learning applications, uh, we're getting we're getting requests for you know 60 frames per second and beyond for for gaming and, and video, um, and and that's just you know just basically requires raw CPU. Uh, again, 64 bit is is where that where that capability is going to be available. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, sort of how many devices are out there today that, that support this. So um, about 80% of the devices that ship today support both 32 and 64-bit. Um, Lollipop, which is required to run 64-bit apps, um, about 88% of devices that ship today uh, have Lollipop or greater or later. Um, those, um, so there's you know, about 12% and, and it's decreasing all the time. Uh, that that currently couldn't run a 64-bit application, and then lastly, um, this is a little bit of a misnomer, but premium devices and premium devices are devices that ARM. We define premium as anything that's uh, selling price of say, f I think about 400 to 500 dollars and above. Um, all of those are capable of running 64-bit apps today. One of the things that um, that you need is memory. So, based on um, requiring probably about a, you pretty pretty much need a two gigabyte uh, part, a DRAM part, in order to run 64-bit Android. Um, 
and that's probably the, the minimum. But <clears throat> one of the things that we're that we're trying to ascertain is, you know, how fast is are those disappearing? You know, it, it for uh, you know, in lieu of, of larger resource devices, um, strategy strategy analytics uh, helped us with this. Um, they believe that next year, um, over half of the demand for DRAM for for devices. And really, my point is here is that you know, I I, I want to make sure that if you're doing a 64-bit app, you're not leaving. Um, some of your users behind because they don't have the resources to actually run that app. But um, by 2023, 95% of the of the of the of the smartphones that, that are out there will have four gigabytes or more. So there's there's my point here is really that that you're really probably not losing many you're not leaving many users behind if you start supporting 64-bit. Um, so that's. Uh, that's what I'm talking about there. <clears throat> um, so Android, sort of the, the mi mi migration timeline. There's, there's been quite a bit of stuff happening around 64-bit. I mentioned here that, uh, that, that Google announced the 64-bit play requirement back in Q4 of, of last year. Um, both Unity and Unreal have, have, uh, have done 64-bit engines for their Oculus um, uh, portions of their engine. That was uh, announced at GDC. Uh, earlier this year. Um, also, if you follow the uh, the Google or, or Android developer blog, um, you'll see that they're they're actually making deploying 64-bit apps a little easier and a little bit more streamlined. Um, I'll, I'll show you some things later about what what Google's been doing to support what could be larger applications because 64-bit pointers are a little bit larger, and your apps could potentially grow a bit. Um, so Google's been doing some things sort of behind the scenes that I'll, I'll share with you. But um, earlier, uh, just a, a month or so ago, uh, Unity uh, announced that they're supporting 64-bit um, for their 2018.3 engine. Um, Android Pie, which I mentioned earlier, is now supports 64-bit only devices. And then by Q3 of next year is when when the the mandate kicks in for having a 64-bit cap uh, capability in your app. Um, so, sort of in the future, um, we believe that there will be, uh, that we'll start to see 64-bit only um, only devices. And I, I have a bunch of, of uh, links at the end. The, the very first um, uh, Google announcement actually mentioned that, that Google's actually very supportive of 64-bit of only, but there are some, some Ecosystem hurdles that we have to have to get over, um, you know, things like uh, you know some of the some of the markets where Google may not have as much influence, um, Asia, those sorts of places. Um, we want to make sure that we're not, um, you know, s sort of stunting the growth of some of the emerging markets where uh, you know the, there aren't a lot of system resources on the devices. So I, I think it's going to be a, a while out before there's 64-bit only. Um, but even for the emerging markets, when when we see the cost of DRAM come down to the point where, you know, a two or four gigabyte part is cheaper than a one gigabyte part, you're, you're going to start seeing the, you know the, that capability, of, uh, you know, that available um, to, to to all users. So, so um, so taking advantage of 64-bit <clears throat> today, <clears throat> I mentioned performance a lot. Um, here's some actual benchmarking data that we've done. Um, so you see this one is actually for, for, for Android runtime for Art. So we're seeing um, overall about a, the very end um, column on the right shows about a 20% performance uplift um, right off the bat with, uh, with, with moving from, from 32 to 64 bit. Um, You'll see there's certain things that that it does much better, um, but overall about a 20 percent you get you know 20 percent increase by recompiling um, or making sure that your Java app doesn't contain any 32-bit libraries. Um, so um, very uh, you know very good numbers um, for native apps. Um, we did a, a Geekbench comparison. Um, anywhere from uh, about seven and a half to fifteen percent. 
um, depending on on sort of which uh, which cortex uh, processor you're using. But uh, in general, um, again, this is sort of just recompiling for 64-bit, and you and you basically get that right off the bat. So, pretty good numbers. Um, one of the things that's also happening uh, is this is Enyo and Demos are internal names, but um, Enyo is actually the Cortex A76, which has been which has been launched. Demos has been announced, so this is a legal slide from from uh, from my standpoint. But uh, but what we're seeing is is we're actually seeing a an increase in um, in the amount of uplift we're, that we're getting over time. So as as we as we're moving to to newer chips down the down the road, we're seeing more. So Enyo, which is the first chip, got about two to three percent right off the bat, moving to 64-bit. Demos, we're seeing about eight percent, and we're there's some unannounced chips that we're seeing more. So so it's it's starting to sort of you know move up um, uh, into the right pretty quickly. So so we're we're really we think that that AR64. I'm sorry, I, I use AR64. There's a bunch of names for it, but the 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 uh, instruction set architecture, 64-bit, um, is really um, it, it allows us to we find larger optimizations with less effort uh, in 64-bit than we do in 32-bit. I mean, 32-bit has been around for a while. We've sort of wrung out a lot of the performance that we've been able to to, to find, and we're finding more performance. In the 64-bit architecture, faster um, as you know as time moves on. So that's 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 a great thing for for the the whole Android ecosystem. So um, the next thing I'm going to show you, um, oops, eh, stop. Um, is I'm going to show you a little demo. Um, so some of our guys did a took the Unity engine, um, did a well, you saw you saw this little sneaky game there, but um, but we 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 wrote a uh, a little demo using uh, some physics engine uh, audio uh, using sort of capsule collider, um, bunch of animation using AI for collision collision avoidance, uh, and compiled it for 32-bit and for 64-bit. Um, and this is these are ARM developers that may not be you know, super gaming developers, and basically they got uh, about a 12% frame rate increase right off the bat. So we think there's probably even more available. But um, without further ado, here's the uh, here's the here's the demo. So so basically, what you're seeing is you're seeing um, up to about 200 of these little soldiers. Um, if I had if I had audio on, you would see when they got killed, they'd be screaming in, in 3D audio and, and all that sort of stuff. But um, it's using um, I don't know all the all the techno all the terminology here, but it's uh, it's basically using I think nav mesh um, for for um, obstacle avoidance, and it's really only doing um, some of the some of the hard things when there's um, explosions and and uh, uh, you know there's people flying about, and so it's it's actually a it's actually a pretty interesting um, you know the, I think the physics engine is only used when there's explosions and. And the guys are flying about, so you see them jump out there. So, um, anyway, um, that's that's the demo. Sorry. Um, so, um, <clears throat> one other consideration for developers um, is my app's too big. <clears throat> and I mentioned this earlier that uh, with 64-bit, um, the pointers are larger, and your APK could be a little bit bigger. So. Um, I'm not saying that Google's been doing this in support of 64-bit necessarily, but because they've noticed that APK sizes have been growing dramatically, and that quote is from their developer's blog, uh, five times the size since 2012, um, they've been starting to do some, some interesting things. With um, App Studio 3.2, they added app bundles. Um, this basically allows for distribution of smaller App sizes. Uh, they quoted uh, between 11 and 64 percent um, app size savings. Um, sort of in league with this is um, Google Play's dynamic delivery, which 
basically looks, looks at the manifest of the device that it's downloading the app to and downloads only what is needed. Uh, again, this saves a lot of space. Uh, and then just uh, about two weeks ago, um, at the, I guess it was the Android Developer Conference at the, uh, at the Commuter Museum, um, they, they announced uh, the 3.3 beta of Android Studio and there's what they're calling the R8 um, app shrinker, which uh, is more, uh, I think it's more compression than anything. Um, I haven't really dug into it a whole lot yet, but, but they've, they've basically recognized that, that, you know, that apps have been growing. Moving to 64-bit isn't going to help that at all, um, but these things should help mitigate any increase that you see because of moving to 64-bit. So that's good. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing that's happened. So, so um, with that, um, I have a summary here. Um, so really the advantages are around security, performance, um, future compatibility of your apps. We think it's a, it's a great thing. It, sort of everybody benefits if you move to 64-bit. Um, the majority of devices, hope I, I convinced you that uh, you know, they support 64-bit today. Uh, and, and it's just going to be you know, growing. That majority will be growing uh, as time moves on. Um, the current uh, um, you know, mainstream markets, if those are the ones that you're after, um, are pretty much all 64-bit today. Um, so you know, sort of have at it. Um, and then uh, um, we see that there's more and more 64-bit or AR64 only architectural features coming. Um, we will probably be um, placing less emphasis on new things for 32-bit and really just fixing bugs and making sure that the, you know, it continues to perform into the future. But the, the new instructions are most likely going to be just 64-bit. So um, with that, um, what we're really asking you to do is start building your apps now. I mean, if, you're, if you weren't aware of, of, of Google's uh, mandate for, for, for the Play Store, um, I, I have some, uh, some links for you to follow up and, and read. But we, you know, we urge you to, to move to 64-bit as, as soon as you can. Um, one of the things that we've been doing is we've actually been tracking some of the more popular apps globally. Uh, and I've actually, I personally have reached out to some of the, those companies and asked them you know, if they were aware of the mandate, what they were doing, what, uh, you know, sort of what they thought about it. And um, some said, yeah, we, we know about it. We're, we're, we're actively, actively moving our app. Um, some believe that, you know, it's, it's just simply a, a recompile. Um, in, in all likelihood, if you're currently updating or, or supporting, I should say, um, both iOS and Android, um, you probably have a 64-bit version pretty close already. Um, iOS has been 64-bit only for about two and a half years. So um, you, you most likely are pretty close. Uh, and it might be, if you've written your code well, um, it might be simply a, a recompile to, you know, to get to a 64-bit version. Um, really, I think it's, uh, you know, it's important for you to start shifting to 64-bit. Um, actually, App Studio defaulted to 32-bit um, um, compiles up until about uh, less than a year ago. Um, now it's defaulted to 64-bit, but basically start using, uh, you know, testing, optimizations, all should be sort of 64-bit focused at this point. Um, really look closely at your, at your native and, and Java apps. Um, upgrade any 32-bit libraries or engines that you're currently using. Um, Things like analytics that, that you might have uh, licensed and used in your, in your, in your app um, might be 32-bit. You might want to take a look at that uh, because those would be something that would potentially slow you down. Um, if you use Neon, which are, um, uh, you know, sort of, if you use the Neon assembler stuff, um, you'll probably want to change to, to the Neon intrinsics um, and, and do that. Uh, a work. I mean, if you if you don't use Neon, that's fine. Um, but Neon basically is is some some hand coded speed ups that uh, that that you might uh, might look at. 
Um, I have a whole bunch of, uh, of again, links to uh, the ARM content that, that explains all of this. Um, and then um, check out our white paper, which was actually published today uh, in support of, of, uh, of, of DroidCon. And uh, it is, should be there. So, um, so that is, um, you know, summarization. Here are some things that, these are a lot of sites that I look at almost daily. Um, and uh, really it's more um, developer.android.com um, is a great resource. Um, this uh, link here actually talks about, uh, you know, sort of what considerations Google um, uh, sort of wants developers to know when they're when they're doing 64-bit builds. Um, let's see what else. Uh, this is the the developer blog. You know, the developer blog has a lot of great information. Um, there's probably a post there about every other day. Uh, anything ranging from you know sort of what's happening with Google Play to to beta releases of of uh, Android Studio. So uh, I think these are all all places. Uh, on this side, there's a, you know, a bunch of information around, around some of the architectures. Um, sorry, not turning the mic. Um, but uh, there's a, a lot of information here on, on the ARM V8 architecture, um, the, uh, the instructions that are available to you. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's a ton of information out there. So I'd recommend that you, you know, look at these weekly, at least. So, so with that, um, that's pretty much what I had to share with you today. Um, if there's any questions, be glad to, to answer. Um, otherwise, we can st start thinking about it. It's getting dark out. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you.